welcome back everybody this is always back with another video on the channel i would like to show you my workflow when i'm developing so you see this thing it's called a mouse I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have heard about it or you have used it now these things makes your development very very slow i mean obviously you cannot get away with it but when you're developing you need pretty much a couple of things you need an ide and then you need a browser to you know you can test your stuff or you want to search about something so you need two things so i've got this browser open here and i've got my couple of uh, projects open in vs code so one is the angular project the second one is a django project for back-end work now i would like to show you how i make my workflow for web development using visual studio code and a chrome browser now this thing i am not going to touch this at least i'm gonna try not touching this at all and i would like to show you how i navigate around Basically, this will help you to make your workflow very, very fast. You don't have to, you know, move your hand and grab the mouse and move the cursor and then click on it. For example, if I would like to open any file from here, usual developer or usually you go take your mouse here, you click on the file and then you navigate around. If you want to go to, you know, this file or you want to have to use your mouse scroll to go down to app component. Now this is okay, but if you uh, notice that uh, if you calculate amount of time you spend uh, just navigating around instead of actually doing a development, that's quite a lot. I I was I was not really happy, you know, using mouse at all because it's just a time based one. It's just not really uh, to me right now. It's not really a good way of you know uh, doing. I navigate to my uh, development workflow. So I'm going to be using VS Code and I'm going to be using Chrome browser. And we're going to try uh, navigating in a Chrome browser without a mouse as well. So I've got open two websites. So you can see I can switch tabs. Uh, just for reference, I'm just going to leave this mouse somewhere here probably so you guys could see. I'm not touching a mouse at all. Hopefully it does not drop okay so here's my keyboard and i'm going to use only this and i will do pretty much everything uh with the keyboard and you can see it's it's a very fast workflow now let's start with the angular project so first of all what do you do when you want to navigate to your file you press ctrl p you search for your file for example if i want to go to login component i will go to login component now I want to go down or I would like to just scroll the page down. I press control and go down. Okay. If I want to go down faster, then I can go to page down and then I will go to the, you know, the, the down faster. Okay. Uh, that's one thing. Now you have a couple of uh, uh, files open. For example, we have HTTP service open. We have auth service open. So how do I navigate in this? So I'll press control page up page down to navigate around these files so i would like to open another file maybe uh let's just say art form and as you can see i've got file uh on the right section of the page now that space is a bit congested i would like to hide my explorer so i can hide my explorer by pressing control b okay now, if I want to go to HTTP service, again, I use control up and I can navigate around to the files. Okay. Any uh, terminal command I want to do, I'll press my shortcut key and now I'm in a terminal. So I'll do ng serve here. And let's just say I would like to create a new terminal. I can create a new terminal here. As you can see, I'm in a bash three now. If when I go back to my old uh, bash one here, I can navigate with my terminals as well. So on gitland2, the ng terminal, uh, ng serve command is running. So let me just stop this. Probably you would like to have a shortcut key where you can close the terminal. I can just close all the terminal. I can bring them up. I can go to the developer uh, debug console. I can go to the terminal again. 
Now, this is uh, one thing. I accidentally opened uh, this. Okay. Yep, we're back. Now, let's just say you would like to go to the file explorer. So, I'll press my shortcut key. I can go to the file explorer here. You can see I can navigate. And then I can, you know. Uh, now, one problem that you might be thinking, okay, I'm in a file explorer without clicking on the mouse onto the, the file. How do I go in there? So I can press my shortcut key and I can, my cursor focuses on uh, my odd service file. There you go. Then I'm going to hide that. Now let's just say you would like to open a f uh, search bar. So I can type my shortcut key and I can search for something HTTP. And that gives me this search. I'm going to hire this and let's just go to, let's just say, go to uh, extension. That's like a general tabs that you have in here. So I can go here and then, you know, I can search for my extension, something like that. And I can just go press tab and go and install that as well. There are some custom uh, shortcut keys that I've done, uh, which is something like, you know, I want to go to the, the Git lens. I can go to Git lens here and I can navigate around. There you go. So I've got one file changed here and I can see uh, the changes here. So I can close the file. I'm going to go to odd form and I'm going to close this file. There you go. There's a string here okay so as you can see I can navigate around uh, within the files and also I can create you know multiple files here I can use like you know groups I don't know what you call it but this video is more like you know showing you my development workflow so I can take the cursor down take the cursor up but if I press the control key I can just scroll down the page okay now, sometimes you would like to, in VS Code, you need to view the command palette. So it's in this uh, command palette. But the command is Control Shift P, which is quite long. I don't want to do that. I will just press F1, and that takes me to the command panel. And I can, you know, use a focus to, you know, next terminal, or I can use this. This is really, really great. You can find any uh, command right here. You just got to search for it, and that's it. You'll get used to it. Now, another thing that I'd like to do is set up a shortcut key for a formatter that I use. So let's just say I'll move this next and I'll move this as well. Okay, so I'll, I want to just do a shortcut key like that and that should ident my code or format my current file automatically. That's one thing. Now, Another command that I would like to show you here is that how do you switch between uh, multiple windows? For example, I've got this Angular project. I want to quickly switch to my backend project, which is Django project. I can switch. You see this? I can switch. I've got a lot of files open, so I can go to particular file, whichever I want to see. And if I want to go to, you know, just particular thing, I can search for it. And if I want to go to any, you know, uh, line number like nine, and then my cursor goes to nine. Let's close these files and you can go to file explorer. I can open any file from explorer. So similar way you take your cursor to the file explorer and click on it. I can do with, with my arrow keys. Okay, let's go to the Angular project. I would like to go to the file explorer and then I would like to open a file like a guard here. And there you go. So you see how I'm moving around. Another thing that I would like to set up in VS Code is my debugger, my debugging commands. So first of all, let's go to the terminal and I would like to make sure that all the terminals are closed and I'm going to run ng serve, which will start our uh, you know server. And then I would like to go to debugger. And actually, the Camtasia, the, the capturing software I'm using, that actually has the same shortcut key what my VS Code has. So when I'm not debugging, uh, when I'm not recording, it should work. So I'll try to go to debugger by pressing, uh, for example, command palette. And I would like to go to debugger. So it says focus on call stack or, you know, 
focus on breakpoint variable watch view so i'll do watch view okay so now i'm in a debugger uh if you want to set it up the command my command is like control shift d for that now as you can see the server is running now how do i debug i've got a shortcut key set up for it and that will start up the browser for me and i could see the project running now usually i have two screens uh, i have like three screens actually so one is for my you know project i could debug stuff and one is for my browser which i could you know explore things now i can only record one screen right now that's why i'm just showing you this so for example here is my browser open how do i go to the email field and type some email and do some action so what i'll do is i'll type f actually i'm gonna press escape i'm gonna type f that gives me these little boxes with characters like a s f so i'll type a i can type my email here for example advice at test.com and I press escape and I press f again and press f now this is going to send an email to the backend code so i'll go straight up to the backend code and here i can see it's running and now it has actually sent that post i can see that on a terminal okay so yep yeah. and now i can see i can type the code so my project is running so if i want to go to you know just localhost i can go back to localhost by just pressing Control l and then you know navigate around i'm going to close this and i'm going to come to the vs code uh, now here so far a common workflow that i've shown you uh, that's that's pretty much it is few things that I would like to show you is how I deal with uh, let's go to the browser first and once we finish with the browser then I'll come back to VS code okay so I'm gonna go to browser here I have a tab open angular so for example I want to create a new tab I'll just press a shortcut key and I will open let's just say Django project so that's Django project now I have a REST project open and I've got Angular project open, angular.io. Now let's just say I want to navigate around this website. So if I was using mouse, I would go and drag my mouse and click on the docs, which takes about three seconds or two seconds. But the way I navigate and use my browser is by just pressing F, press H, and I'm going to go to another page. So pressing F key gives me all these characters. I exactly put my eyes on to the place where I want to click on and I can see the characters for example if I want to go to uh, fundamentals I'll type SG and then I want to go to form so I'll type F SH and I click on introduction now the most common thing that we do in the browser is just you know scroll up and down so I can scroll up and down I can scroll faster you know and I can scroll smoothly yep and few other common uh, stuff that we do is going back and forward so I'll go back you see I can go all the way back Oop, I'm here so SD I'm gonna press tab and let's go to angular look you know go back and forward now I'm gonna switch the tab and I'm gonna go to documents let's click on documents and it's going to take me to document and then i can navigate around i can search by pressing some uh by searching for some character let's go to new tab opening a new tab for example we do open uh, we can open uh postgres girl now bear in mind few applications don't work this way because this extension i'm using doesn't work with the google gmail or google drive uh, unfortunately they don't support it so uh, i've never found any website except some google products that don't support this uh this extension so yep yeah, there you go so you can switch between tabs and you know you can navigate around your uh pages pretty much anything i can go switch back and you know when i'm working i don't really need to switch to the browser by pressing alt tab because that's always on my second monitor so i don't have to switch all i have to switch is my different projects so i can switch between these projects so as you can see there is pretty much uh, nothing that i need a mouse for and once you get used to with this workflow uh, it 
really helps you to develop faster. You don't really worry about dragging things around. You just type the commands and things happen. So I'm going to go to terminal and I'm going to stop the server. I'm going to kill it and I'm going to open a new one. Once I open a new one, that a virtual environment for Django projects automatically starts. So let's just press F5. This will ask me what I want to do is to start a Django project. So it's going to open a terminal. It's already configured and then I don't really have to do it. So there is an error. I'm just not going to worry about it for now. So we'll go to terminal and I'm going to stop this. Let's kill it. And then I've open. Uh, I'll just do manual run server and that wouldn't have a problem because debugger had got some issues so yeah uh, this this is really really good workflow I find myself not using uh, uh, mouse at all so here you can go to the menu as well so alt F you can switch between the menus the most thing is like switching between projects and files and you know searching things and writing a code and running it with a terminal and running a debugger these are pretty much done uh, by this workflow now, a few things I would like to show you is if I go to preference and I will go to keyboard shortcuts and I would like to search for a user so now a few, few things that I'll definitely have to use, um, you know, mouse, for example, if I want to open this to, you know, uh, open this into JSON format, I can't do it without a mouse because I don't know the shortcut key. If you do know the shortcut key, you can do that. But the thing is, this is not a common thing that you do in a VS Code. The common thing is navigating on the files, uh, searching for things or going to the, uh, let me show you one thing. Okay, so for example, if I take you to the one of the view file, so let's just do let's just do setup. Now here I've got this server response. Okay, here. So if I want to go to the declaration for this, either I can press this button and go to definition, or I have already set up the F12 command. So I'll type F12, and that takes me to the function. I want to go back where I was, I can press Alt and go back, okay? Now, the reason why you're watching this video is because I want to inspire you to actually get your workflow right. VS Code is pretty amazing uh, text editor, or you can call it IDE. It's very customizable. Find your own workflow, avoid using a mouse. Uh, because that's just the time waster when you are just developing. If you are developing on a mobile emulator, well, you probably need to use mouse. But just a web developer uh, don't really need a mouse at all, and that's that's just so good. I, I don't really need uh, any navigation device or something because that makes me slow. So you can see that I can navigate. Now, a few things that I would like to mention is I'm using a Vimium extension for this. So uh, you can do that. And also for ID, obviously, you guys know it's a VS Code. Uh, I will probably share some of my custom user commands in the description of this video. So yeah, check it out. Uh, that's about it. I just wanted to show you my workflow without mouse. and I'm. If you have any question, like you want to do something and you're not able to do it, paste the comment below uh, and then I'll try to answer that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.